trying to reach for greatness, man. It's a long road. I'm not saying I'm great now, but I'm saying I could be one day if I keep sticking to this grind. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> It's easier to think you famous It's harder to work for greatness These kids nowadays get prevalence to the latest with the Welcome everybody to the J Team Brand Podcast. Hey Josh Pizarro here with Douglas Sullivan. What's going on? It's Janet Samadaya with Douglas Sullivan in real estate. And here we sitting with my guest, Henry. Uh, Henry, I'm gonna let you pretty much introduce yourself sure. a little bit about what you do. Sure. Um, and then we'll get into the origins, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, my name is Henry Eisenstein, currently with Keller Williams out in central New Jersey, Monmouth in Ocean County. Uh, twenty three years old. I just started my own team about forty five days ago. So I've been in business about this will be my third year in business. 38. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. So, exciting and, stuff. And how old are you, man? Share with our audience yeah. how old you are. 23. 23 yeah. years old. Successful real estate agent at 23, man. In three years, that's that's you know that's a big deal. Um, and I kind of wanted to get into a little bit about uh, what we were talking in the background. Yeah. Um, so you started your, your team with Keller Williams, um, and you hit some bumps in, road, in the road, I guess. And you were saying that you kind of left the real estate game yeah. and then came back. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So, uh, again, this this will be my third year, okay. right? So, my first year, I started in uh, September 2015, went completely broke after 12 months in the I didn't make a penny for about 10 months, actually. Then yeah. the next month, I made $25,000, and I was like, all right, I got to figure this thing out. I was like, there's something <laughs> to this business, right? And then um, I, I ended up joining a team. I started getting coaching the right way, and then... Uh, you know, from that first year going broke and basically doing nothing to the next year, I did 16 million in sales, um, basically Damn. by myself. Um, There's about 40 transactions out with me in Central Jersey, so you can get an idea about the price point. Okay. But the big thing for me was that I started mastering cold calling. Okay. But the thing was, I was also being a part of a team. You don't make all the money. Definitely. So right. again, you know, I did like 350 thousand in commissions, but you know, making a very small percentage of that is not how my mind works. You know, right. I, I need to figure out how to do more. More volume. Exactly. Absolutely. So, um, but again, it was the the best experience I ever had in my entire life. I learned so much. I had incredible people in my life at that point, and I just realized. Um, Actually, when we met at the Gary Vaynerchuk event. Yeah, yeah. We're going to definitely talk about that. Yeah, which was amazing. That's, but that was uh, funny, that, man. After, right after that event, it just got me thinking. I was like, I, I have so much more ambition I want. Mm -hmm. I just, it was funny. It was it was the team atmosphere. Okay. But I thought it was the industry. So that's why I left. Okay. Hmm. I thought I could do other things. So I started trying different businesses. I tried this. I tried that. And, and four months into it, uh, now we're in January, because this was September of last year, right? Okay. January, my coach yells at me. He's like, dude, you can't do four or five businesses at the same time. Name one other successful person who's ever done that and been, and been successful at it. And I was just like, I'm definitely not a Richard Branson or an Elon yeah. Musk uh, yet. So yeah. I was like, most yeah. likely, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got to focus on my one thing. So I got right back into real estate and I just said to myself, look, if last year on my own, I could do 16 million in sales, I know what needs to be done now. Uh, you know, how do I do, how do I do 10 times that? So that's yeah. why my goal is 150 to 200 million this year. Okay. Um, I, within the past, you know, 30 to 45 days, I, I have now three agents, including myself. I have also three ISAs, and I have two support staff. Wow. Damn. So at 23 years old. Yeah, huh? at 23. So like, I'm just realizing that like, I know what I'm capable of, and I just feel like too many people wait. You know, it's like, oh, you know, well, I, I don't have this built yet. I don't know, man. I don't have this built yet. Yet. You know, oh, I was I'm like, but I, for the right yeah, I was like, time. look, I, I don't, I don't pitch people on, you know, um, on the money that they're gonna make. It's Great. just like I know where we're going. Right. Exactly. And I have a question for you. Um, so you, you're currently running a team, and yes. although the team is fairly new, yes. Um, tell everybody about that experience because you're responsible for these people. Yeah. And 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 their finances and their you know what they make and all of that so exactly. tell everybody what that's like and sure. the responsibilities that you have to these people you know their livelihood really yeah of course and honestly yeah, everybody's looking at you as a leader bro no 100% right. and honestly it's inspiring but um, I don't know how else to be I, I've only been in this role so from when I was 18 to 20 I started working at a kid's party place for my friend he started expanding I helped him open up a couple stores um, what I did had, you do for him you did so operations or I did operations I was the general manager of a couple oh, locations that, yeah. and, uh, nice. I mean I had over 40 employees, I was running a million and a half dollar company at 20. So like hey. I had that responsibility at a young age, but I just, I, I loved it. I gravitated towards it. I didn't know how else, how else to run my life. Right. So being a part of another team and not having that role was freaky to me. Right, I, I only I live off of that yeah, kind of yeah, feeling, yeah. and now having these people in my life, and I'm like, look, the average age of my team is 23. Solid, wow. right? So they can kind of relate to you a little. Yeah, 100 percent relate yeah. to me. And I was like, look, I, I know what I'm doing now. I know where I'm going. I was right. like, look, if you just stay along with the ride, you're going to be right there with me. Yeah, just grind with me, yeah. man. I tell my guys all that all the time. Man, no, it's amazing, sure. and it, 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 it honestly, they inspire the hell out of me. 
know, like my, my team has to get to the office or be, I have a 7 a.m. phone call and I have a 9 p.m. phone call. Okay. We're at the office at 7 a.m. the entire team. Wow. That's nice. grind right there. That's grind right it's there. It's just, but here's the thing. You can't do that when you're talking to people who are twice my age, three times my age. Yeah. Right. They won't take you seriously. They don't enough. take me seriously. And it's that, it's, it's like an audacity behind that, right? Because yeah. we were just saying that, like, it's really hard to break into the real estate industry because a lot of people choose their agents via experience, Ag- not really what I'm bringing to the table in regards yep. to work ethic. And because I did, me I did and the exact opposite, my friend. And yeah, and, and, and me and you both why, know. Why are you going to be successful in it, Yeah, right? yeah. So. And we know that, you know, just because you have experience doesn't mean that you're going to give the same energy that you're going to give yeah. to that next project. Because, exactly. you know, when you have like 10 properties in your, in your hand, you're not going to baby one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything has to get your, your attention. And, so. and it's funny because like when I started my own team, I started interviewing these mega agents around me, right? So again, I did 15, 16 million on my own last okay. year, right? So I started interviewing people who were doing like, you know, they were doing 25 million, they were doing 50 million, they were doing 70 million. Top agent in my county last year did about 120 million, Jeez. right? I started interviewing them and talking to them. They're like, yeah, you got to hire experienced agents. Um, that way, when you bring somebody on, that's another 10 million plus that you're bringing on to the team. And I'm like, wait a second. Looking at numbers. They're, yeah, I was like, you're only focusing on what they're doing right now. Mm-hmm. But if I, their standards are that 10 million, that's their standard. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at, I'm looking for individuals who have my fire who want to go from zero to a million mm-hmm. dollars, mm-hmm. Right? right? Or more. Right, because they already have a good, solid lifestyle. Exactly. Right? Like, really, you're telling me that somebody who's 35, 40, 50 years old is going to go, is going to want to be, you know, their whole life is going to be altered to try to go to double or triple what they want to do. Right. Mm-hmm. I and, mean, so so speaking to that point, then, yeah. we're, what are three qualifications of somebody that wants to be on your team? Uh, first is just an unbelievable hunger and drive. Right. Okay. That's just number one. I almost don't even care about your experience. Yeah. Like like my one of my first ages, because I, uh, I, I think I've interviewed about 25, 26 people at this point in time. I only have two. Okay. Right. Um, um, one didn't even have their license yet. They were still in school, right? He's 20 years old. Hunger. Hunger. Look, uh, and um, his second day, he made 900 calls over the course of about eight hours. Jeez. 900 calls. And again, like, he's never cold called before. Okay. But he look, he's telling me stories about, like, right. when I was younger, I would go door to door trying to sell his painting services. I'm like, I need you, man. Yeah, that's hunger, I was like, because if you just allocate that same hunger Energy. and drive into this, game over. So, game over. Right, right. Game, game over. over. Like, I don't and want... Young. Yeah, and young. Yeah, and I mean, like, young, look, and I teach... energy. You ain't got energy. no you, real you life experience. You can't beat my team's energy. You yeah. just can't. Right? I mean, the average age of my office is like 40 years old, mm-hmm. right? It's just like when I start telling these people, we get to the office at seven, immediately it's just like, oh, oh my, my God. God. Excuses, excuses, excuses. It's crazy. It's I'm crazy. up at six o'clock in the fucking morning, so if I could get to the office at seven, I would, you know, I was just like, but I, I just asked him, I was like, look, are you just willing to play at a, an all-time level? And it looks like you're not. And that's okay. You just won't be part of the team. Yeah. And there's so many people who come up to me like, how do I become a part of the team? I'm just like, look, step one, we'll be at the office at 7 a.m. Right. Meet me here. And look, it's not even for me. It's not for me, <laughs> Meet though. Me here. It's not for me. It's for, for them. You, yeah. it's for them. It's the standard. It's a like, discipline. Yeah, think about it like this. The, the kid who just made, uh, he just made 900 uh, phone calls, right? Yeah. Think about this guy's standard. Never been in the business before. Not even, just got his license last Thursday, two days before he made the 900 calls, right? Think about his standards. That's insane. You already set the bar high. You right set there. the bar so freaking high, he can't go Everybody backwards. Everybody around though. you now has to make 1,000 calls. That's what just I'm saying. To even, like, My team's making thousands of calls a day. A day. It has to be done. That, but that's, I mean, look, that's my market, right? Central Jersey, I mean, we have that ability. Agreed. Right? Right. Um, I know everybody And you know your market, different. so that's why, that's why you're able to tap into that. So, yeah. that's so did you grow up in Jersey? Um, yeah, just, uh, I was born actually in Virginia, but we moved up really fast, like a month or two into my life, we moved to Jersey. Okay. And uh, yeah, grew up in Freehold. Nice, nice. Yeah, just and how was that experience like? Because yeah, you you have a lot of hustle, man. So is it, was you, it that a Jersey boy in you? Was like, no, actually, a lot of people don't realize this, but I actually went through a depression where I almost killed myself. Through you know, oh, wow. it was crazy. Uh, By the way, man, thank you for sharing that. No, yeah. not That's everybody's real. open enough to like give. No, that look, I mean, I built who I am now, and I'm so proud of what I went through because I wouldn't trade it for the world. Wow. Right? This is why I, I love having people like this on the pod. But go ahead, continue. Yeah, no, of course. So I mean, like from like like eight, nine, ten years old, it started, uh, and it was just being bully throughout school um it was uh, look i mean here's the thing i i don't i'm not here to be political or anything like that but yeah. obviously my last name is eisenstein so i'm obviously Jew- like my family's jewish okay. right but they they sort of bullied me for those reasons it was like the way i looked or, you know and look uh, i had no confidence yeah right so at a young age with no confidence and you start making fun of me for anything i don't know any better i was yeah. just like i thought right. you hated me right exactly. right so i mean i thought i was the problem but obviously now you realize the bullies only do that because of their own self-confidence, their own self-confidence. Issues. absolutely yeah. right but uh i didn't know that Right, so you know, look at I mean, my suicidal thoughts started at nine. 
Damn. That's crazy. Which is crazy. Yeah, age. yeah. It's like, like I think that about sends chills to my body, man. Dude, right? like, I got, like I got a young nine year old, you know what I mean? And I, I speak so much influence into her. Like, yeah. she thinks she's the shit. That's what I'm You know what I mean? I'll make sure that. Yeah. And I didn't, look, I didn't have that, right? I mean, like, look, don't get me wrong. I kept it so bottled up. Yeah. Right? Nobody knew about it. My parents didn't know about it until I was 16, 17 years old. Fuck. Had no idea. Yeah. Well, most parents don't are not aware of it, I agree. you know? I agree. Look, I've been on several other podcasts. I've been speaking about it. I'm trying to get the awareness awesome, out. Man. You know, just like everybody has that one thing that they're, like, that foundation or anything. Yeah, right? For me, it's depression. Like, in the younger kids, just like, for, for me, I had no guidance, mm. right? I gravitated towards video games. So if you ever see these young kids with their heads in a screen, so, that was mm-hmm. me. You grew up in a two-parent home, though, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So two-parent uh, home, but still felt like you didn't have any guidance. Yeah. Um, Were you, just, like, if you mind in, like, elaborating? Like, sure. Like, you know, with parenting I, just, comes... Just, I just growing up in a two-parent that. home doesn't mean doesn't anything. Mean, yeah, yeah, no, I, no, I, I, no, I see what you're saying, though. But it's just like, I also look at it like, um, look, nobody's taught how to be a parent. Right, Pure, exactly. No. Nobody's taught. Man, I'm a parent. So, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, like, everybody's just trying their best. Their best. Right. right. Don't get me wrong. I used to run a kid's party place, so I have a lot of education, you know, how teaching, to deal with kids. how to deal with kids. <laughs> so, I, you know, it was a little bit different for me than most people. However, um, my parents uh, both have a nine-to-five job. My father's a teacher. My mom worked for AIG. Okay. Um, but they, uh, I, there was no drive. There was no hunger. There was no determination of bettering themselves in their current situations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And They were uh, okay and happy where they at. Yeah. Yeah, and look, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing I mean, wrong with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that at absolutely at all. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do believe that everybody has a responsibility uh, to go out and try to try grow. To grow yeah. Right? But um, the, the problem with me growing up was that I, I was scared to tell them. Right? I, I didn't know how to tell them. Okay. Right? I didn't know how to express myself. Uh, I didn't want to go to therapy. I didn't want mm-hmm. to do any of that. So I just gravitated towards video games. But here's where we get really interesting. And I always ask myself, because so many people are so curious, uh, how did this come out of me? And I'm telling you, it's in, when it comes to video games, they can't judge me on right. my looks. Right. They, can't, they only can judge you on one thing, they performance. They yeah. performance. That's it. Yeah. Are you incredible or do you suck? Real right. quick, you got a Twitch account? Uh, I don't actually. You know, really brother, you got to jump on that. I got to jump on that. I know because I'm next. I'm jumping on it, Twitch. That's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I like video Twitch? games. No, look, I'm not gonna lie. Look, I used to post. I was, yeah, I was on that track, right? I mean, like I was, I was posting on YouTube. I was making those videos, those okay. montages. You yeah, want to come yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I was nice. that guy, right? Okay. You know, you know, eight, ten years so ago. Twitch so Twitch will be right, right up. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. Really? No, I, I was, uh, I was about to get on it before I threw out my Xbox because uh, I just needed to do it. But I will say, Xbox is a fucking like it'll take you off of your focus. I agree. No. <laughs> Look, it just what ended up happening was that it took all of my focus. It wasn't okay. some; it was all of it. If I wasn't at school, I was playing. Okay. But here's the thing: when you play for years and years and years straight, I was ranked number one for some of the games that I was playing. Hmm. I had a year of gameplay. Well, wait, 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 I don't know if you know what a year of Twitch. gameplay means, but you're staring at a computer Serious screen right for now. a year, <laughs> right? So a year of my Jeez. life is invested in this. this. <laughs> but here's the thing: that work ethic. Yeah, really quick. So yeah. t- Twitch is just a video game platform for like uh, gamers. Okay, okay. Just for okay. video games. Just for okay. Video games. Yeah, but again, like now, watch this. Watch how this trans- uh, transforms into business. If you in business, they only care about one thing. Performance, Getting, right? Getting so I just I realized that work ethic in different ways, and I ran teams on in these video games. So I just I realized that, and and again, I got I, I was one of those people who had a job when they were like almost a senior in high school. Yeah. I, I didn't want to get a job. Yeah, My family yeah. was telling me like you got to get a job. I'm like no, I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was like, I don't want to get a job. Nice, nice. Um, but uh, you know, I got I gravitated to a place called Pump It Up. Okay. It was my second job, and just uh, I would get in early. I would stay late. I would always ask, give me more responsibility. It was never enough. And then all of a sudden, they started entrusting me with everything. Thing. And you know, again, in two years, I ran a million and a half dollar company for them. Damn, man. Uh, you, know, you, got a, you got a you got a different kind of hunger, man, it's and impressive. I can hear it in your voice too, man. Yeah. Like but it, you, look, here's the thing: I built this. Yeah. I'm not lying. Yeah. Ten years ago, I was suicidal. I yeah. had no self confidence. I built who I am today. Agreed. And again, I would not trade that for the world because it made my skin as tough it is, as it so is. So when now. you say when you say you built that, some of the steps. Like, sure. what would you say to a young kid who's out there and is like has very little confidence, but maybe has an entrepreneurial state? Because everything that you're saying is speaking to me. Yeah. Like, I was the young kid. I wasn't bullied. I didn't. I wasn't suicidal as a kid. Yeah. But I was almost shelled as a person because I was scared to come out and, you know, want to sell business or you know yeah. want to do things in class and stuff like I that. I was. That. I was. You know, I just was getting by. Look, and my just, family wasn't 100 percent supportive of what I'm doing at all. Right and like, look, I was mentioning the Asbury Park Press, a big newspaper by me, right, uh, for the Circle of Excellence Award. Just like if you were too, right? If you had a certain level of production, no one cares. 
Yeah. No one cares for my family. Yeah. They don't care at all. It's just like I, I don't have a degree. I dropped out of college for the you know for the that old job where you know I was running my friend's store. Um, but I just knew that I wanted to be in business. I wanted to yeah. have my own company. But one thing I would say to them, like, and I'm talking to a lot now. I do a yeah. lot of personal coaching. Okay. I coach all of my own agents and my whole team. I do a lot of one on one coaching. Uh, but the biggest thing for me is just realizing number one, do you want more from yourself? Are you content with where you are? Or do you want more? Because if the answer, and I hope the answer is you want more, more. it right. should always be that. I want more. Everybody in this room wants more. Absolutely. Right? And even when I'm, you know, I'm never going to be satisfied. But the point is, if you want more, it, the, the, the first part is realizing that if you keep doing what you're doing, you're not going to change. It's mm-hmm. the definition of insanity to keep doing the same yes. thing and expecting a different result. And my family did that for, you know, for 20, 30 years. They're doing the same thing every day, expecting things to change. That's yeah. just not the case. And then sitting back and complaining about it. And then say, well, yeah. Well, like, well not, I'm not saying do? your parents, but, no, but I, I mean, look, people most in general individuals. will sit back and I agree. bitch about their situation and not go out and put the work needed. I agree. You know, to, so I, to I have a question. Sure. Um, and this is for us yes. because we Fact are though. we are basically trying to build something, which is a partnership and a team. And, yes. and, and because you already have that started, sure. what advice would you give to us as yes. partners right now and people that are trying to build a, a team in a team? tough city because yes. um, if people d- don't know this um, New York City and Jersey real estate is completely different completely, yeah, it's completely night and day, different so sure. the volume 100%. of business that he does in Jersey I mean we'd be lucky to do half a quarter that. of that yeah. not even a half quarter, a quarter yeah. of yeah. that yeah. Um, so as and young agents still, like, you know new value. agents in the business oh, technically because we're only in our third year yes um, hey, and we've gone through our trials and tribulations yeah, with companies here. and stuff yeah. like that what, what advice would you give us to um, do to basically you know kind of go in that path of like success and don't um, and building don't be patient hmm. everyone try, like, for me I, the reason why I looked at these teams and these teams have been around for almost 10 years and this year they just did 25 or 30 or 40 million dollars yeah. hmm. it took them 10 years to do that right. and they kept telling me over and over again I just wasn't hiring the right people wasn't listening. like for 10 years you kept making the same mistake <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no 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 it's this on you crazy Right, so I said to myself, and I just went to the Grant Cardone Growth Con. So he's all about ten xing your life, ten xing your business, ten xing your relationships. So I said to myself, how do I ten x? Okay, what does that business really look like? How many agents do I need? How many appointments are we setting on a daily basis? What does everything look like? And I just said, why am I waiting ten years to achieve that result when I could do it in twelve months? Wow. Look. Uh, and I spoke to a lot of extremely high level. I paid for like the front row seats, so I had one on one time with all these speakers. Mm -hmm. And the big thing is that everyone says, have your twenty year vision. Have a 20-year vision. What is that? Yeah, and what does it look like? Vision. Now, watch this, though. <laughs> what they said is, but 20 years is not guaranteed. At all. Right, exactly. So why are you waiting a for 20 year years for that to happen? So, you yeah, know. exactly. But, so the point is that if that's the case, why are you waiting 20 years to achieve that result? Yeah. How do you take a 20-year vision and squeeze it to two years? My thing, my thing is every day doing something that's going to get you closer to your vision every single day, no I matter agree. what it is. Look, and in our day, business, uh, for me, and I teach a lot of individuals, I've been on stage a few times, it is just prospecting. Right. This business boils down to prospecting. It is the start of everything. If you want to close more deals, prospect more. Agreed. Case in point. There's nothing else to it. The agent who wants who does the most business goes more appointments than anybody else. Period. True. So if you want more business, any agent, period, I just made the decision, I'm going to out-prospect every single person on the planet. Mm-hmm. So that's why my agents, they come in and they have such a ridiculously high standard for calling. For cold calling. I just realized. Look, last year, and again, I did for $16 million in sales, I, I was just watching older videos of myself doing like, you know, mm. with my phone out, taking yeah. selfie videos, right? <laughs> and I'm talking about success and everything. And this was, you know, almost 12 months ago. And I'm like, yeah, well, I make about 100 calls a day. And I'm like talking about how incredible that is. Look, last week, we had a 3,500 3, dial day. The entire team made 3,500 calls. Okay. Wow. In one day. And just out of curiosity, because these are a lot of fucking calls a day. Yes. Mm-hmm. What database are you pulling these phone numbers from? So, and again, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like, for us, uh, I still look, and all I did last year for those 100 calls was expireds. Okay. And I would just keep redialing through expireds, right? By me, it's a lot easier to get those numbers. I just pay for a service. They give me right. the numbers the next morning. Gotcha. And again, I call from 745, and if I don't have appointments, I'm still dialing till the day I leave that, the second I leave that office. Gotcha. Right? So... Uh, again, for last year, I only did about 100 calls. The reason why it's different now is that I started finding other avenues that I can be calling through. 
right? So it was expires and cancels originally. I started adding on for sale by owners. Now my team does something called circle prospecting on such a high level, it's crazy. What's circle prospecting? Circle prospecting is, let's just say, a Douglas Element agent just sold a, a, a unit in a condo building. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why is that entire building not called? Saying, hey, one, two, three, blah, 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 just sold for X number of, um, you know, X dollar, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we we thought it was pretty good. What, what are your What's your opinion on that? And they, uh, I wait, mean, so, yeah, so basically, so basically, what he's saying is is what we do with like marketing. So. The difference here in the city is because Douglas Element is also a property management company as yes. well. We, we have a department um, for property management. Correct. Um, we have to, we manage a lot of properties in the city. Correct. So as an agent, if you sold a unit in a building, you can't necessarily, if it's managed by DE, yes. you can't necessarily uh, poach that building. You can't mm -hmm. really market that building because Understood. it's DE managed. Okay. So more than likely they so, have an agent that's already... Here, right. So watch this. I'll flip this around on you. Okay. Because I hate I hate making excuses because if I start doing uh, it, okay. everybody on my team will start doing it. Definitely. Right. So I have to figure out a way around it. I only look for right. solutions. Okay, fine. So if it's, a, if, it, if it's not a DE building, I'll still call on that building and I won't even say the agent who sold it. I just say a unit in your property sold for X dollar. When do you plan on moving? And I'll say that 6,000 times a day until I find somebody who's looking to move. It's interesting that you say that, right? Mm. Because we were talking about, we have like a uh, idea of getting to the Seward Park that we were talking about. Um, and I like that you just gave that idea in regards yes. to calling the buildings and saying, hey. And I do the same so thing for my communities. Yeah. Mm. Now, a cool, uh, like, the, the idea that we had, and want to see how you feel about this. For sure. one Not, particular build, complex yeah, that we're complex. trying to attack. It's a big complex attack. that we're trying to attack. We want to be the niche, too, because these are, like, over a 1,000 apartments. Great. Right? So we want Great. to be the go-tos. Um, how do you feel about social media marketing in regards to target marketing and creating videos to target specifically that complex, that audience? I think it's a must. I think it's a must. However, what people don't realize is that I look at social media is it's always an addition to an addition something. To something. Thank you. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. You can't just do social media yep. and expect business to come. Right. You, here's the thing. Um, I look at social media, don't get me wrong, because Gary Vaynerchuk talks on both ends of the stick, but I look yeah, at yeah. social media, a lot of it is... is um, is where you're kind of waiting for business to come to you. Yes. Right? And I'm not saying all and of it because you can actually it. absolutely direct message and go after and pull them. But a majority of, right? of it is. A lot of it is yeah. waiting for people to come yep. to you. So I would I would double down on both. Why have you not called every single unit in that entire complex and just say, hey, yeah, you know, it's Josh uh, with Douglas Element. Just let you know a unit just sold for X dollar amount. Uh, look, we've, we've noticed that there's a pretty high turnover right in here. I'm I just like curious. When do you plan on moving? I love this idea. And just hitting everybody because, again, this is how... Now, out of curiosity, how the... Do we get every single number to that? There's a way building. to get it. I got There's that. a way to get it. So yeah. look, okay, and again, cool. so no, I, I again, but sure. now I'm just doing this with every community. Because like at it. first, what people would do is like they call it just sold calls, right? Right. They right. tell all these agents, just make you just sold calls, and I just realized like, okay, or the cards and watch, they send it out to the building. But watch this now. What happens if you've never sold a property? I had to restart my business this January, right? Because I got out of the we business. Went that. We didn't sell so, any properties so watch this. for a while. Okay, I didn't have to sold the property. Now you're starting to make excuses. What I said to myself is, why am I not calling on other agents in my office's properties that they just sold? So Keller Williams has a thousand agents by me. So I'm calling on every single, now guess what? Now I have a thousand people who are selling properties every single day that I'm not claiming are mine. I'm saying my company just sold a property right around the corner from you. When do you plan on moving? Mm. And now I'm using Which them. Which is not poaching. So it's absolutely that's not, poaching. not poaching. So like, look, and here's the thing. Now my team is calling so much, we're dialing faster than the people are closing properties. So now what we're having to do is that now we're calling on other people's properties, other companies' properties. Like, hey, property just sold right around the corner from you. I'm not even saying it's my company at this point. Right. I'm just saying, look, hey, a property sold in your neighborhood. Because people don't know. Game. They don't know. Yeah, it's just, like, it, look, I'm, I'm giving you market what? information, and people yeah. just, look, we get probably 99 no's for one yes, mm. but that's just the numbers, baby. Right. Hey, look, at the end of the day, I just didn't want to make excuses. Good. Right? Yeah, like, like one I thing that- I love that idea. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's I love that amazing. idea. And one thing that we've been um, attacking, which you know we've been talking about, is always going to open houses that are Correct. held by FISBOs, Correct. right? Because you're going to go in, you're going to physically meet the Correct. owner, you're going to say hello, you're not going to pitch them. Right. Yeah. You're going to- because everybody's much, pitching them. Yeah, trust everyone's me pitching them. And it's, I think it's fairly annoying for, to have somebody come into your household, yeah. in a whole open house, and have you pitch right then and there. Yeah. But it's great relationship builder. Hey, how you doing? My name is Josh. Look, but here's the thing. There's still, there's still a lot of for sale by owners. Like, I call on like two this week, uh, uh, specifically that I remember. Both of them were agents. 
And they actually oh, yeah. are that super part me. time, and they actually yeah. wanted another agent to list it with. So guess who they're going to list with? Because I was the person who wow. called them. Wow. So, nice. but again, it it's not always a person who hates agents, and you have to also understand they had an experience with an agent or had a friend in the uh, who had an experience with an agent, and it didn't go well. Right. You have to feel for them. It's just yeah. like being screwed oh, over yeah. by a car salesman or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. We've all been there. Yep. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm just saying. I look at things just way differently. How can it be done 10 times better? Like an open house. Most agents do it. Like when is your day for open houses out here? Sunday. Sunday, right? Like Sundays, the, to, Saturday, to Sunday usually are the open houses. Sunday's so, like the big day because yeah. everybody can walk Same thing and, by me. and yeah. go Same around. thing by me. But what, let me ask you a question. How many open houses is every agent doing on average a week? One, uh, right? Well, I would one, say, yeah, one day. average. But so then we, why we try to do two, three. Two or three. Two. Two, two is solid. Here, three, here's like, the thing, though. Yeah. But why aren't you doing ten? That's just a question I've always asked my team. That's why true. aren't we doing more? Yeah. I'm not saying it yeah. has to be yeah, ten, right. but how do I get closer to right. that number? How about just open house every day? Because that's just the average. That's, yeah. that's what I'm if, you're not, if you don't have enough business, what else are you doing? Yeah, agreed. You're, just, right. you're right about that. Is and that just most agents, and look, and again, because I teach so many people, they all give me the same excuse. Well, I got this going on. I got this going on. I'm like, okay, well, then don't come to me. Ask me why you're only making so much money. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, again, yeah. like, this is why my age, average agent on my team is so young because we don't have those things that are, you know, coming up. Life Look, hold People have, you kids. have kids. I get and that. Stuff, yeah. I understand yeah. 100%. But here's the thing Are you willing to sacrifice your true potential for, for what? I understand it's your kids, but if no, you don't no, grow... I, listen, man, dude, you're not telling me anything I don't know. I agree. Yeah. I want, I sacrifice time with, you know, my kids and my daughter who's, you know, young, but yeah. for this business, because I know that me putting myself in position yes. to win yep. is going to benefit her in the long run. In the long run. Right now... But no one looks at that. Everybody looks that. at today. No, I want to be there today. for them today. No, and no. I'm, what I'm going to say to them, look, you're always going to be there from, for them today. What are you going to fucking guess miss what? play? Yeah, but guess what? You're not going to live the life that you were meant to live. What, what happens if you were meant to be a millionaire, you were meant to live uh, as a millionaire, take yep. your family on multiple vacations, be able to pay for their college with no problem at all. I mean, like, uh, pay for their weddings, pay for their future home. What happens if that was the life you were supposed to live, so but you were just too scared and too risk adverse to not take the, 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 the chance? The chance. And here's yeah, the thing, man. and I'm not saying everybody's built like me, because absolutely not. And I get that, and again, but I built, built it. I, I built this. Anybody can build that. That's what I'm saying. Right? Anybody can build that. Which Look, is and I again, love. ten years ago, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to kill myself. That's a serious thing. But again, like I built who I am. Right? That changed. And I, you changed your mentality. Yes. Which is what mindset makes is the game. you are right now. Mindset, mindset is, the is the fucking game. Yeah. The 90% of this is, business is, not, is mindset. It's straight mindset. If yeah. you fucking can't take a no, you're not meant for this business. Absolutely if not. you can't yeah. take my fa- a phone slam My, my favorite line ear, is that I don't want to fuck. sound salesy. I'm like, uh, I think your license says salesperson on it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you in real estate? Right. Huh? What yeah. you want What'd you want to be? I don't understand. You're a salesperson. You just have this connotation in your head that sales means bad. Yeah. Right. You're a salesperson. You're supposed to be prospecting you're supposed to be going on appointments i'm sorry how else do you make money in this business yeah it's true if you're not meeting people what are you a secret agent yeah, you're a secret agent i yeah. mean like look if you want to do one two deals a year that's fantastic just stop questioning yourself if it works for you well unfortunately on the interest of time know, we, um, we are gonna have to wrap it up but i mean i think this is just key so i want you to kind of like leave our viewers with something key that they can use and just broad sure. not Pertaining to like sure. real estate or anything like but that, but maybe just even a day, in a, a day in the life of Henry, the right. real estate agent. What do you do when you wake up? Yeah. To what time? Sure. To both. I, I mean, look, I'll, I'll leave with two. So, because I think a power schedule is extremely important, right? A power schedule, yes. right? Because most people, um, they don't. Uh, it's a, it's that um, they don't plan to fail, but they pl- they fail, fail to, to plan, plan, right? So the point is that if you don't have a schedule that you're working off of every single day, like think about it like this: if you open up a retail shop, do you have an opening and a close time? Absolutely, right. freaking so. You run your own business as a real estate agent. You have an opening and you have a close time. Why is it always different? I'm definitely Most agents, on that one. look at this. You watch this door open. I'm, I promise you, people are still walking in. What time are we at right now? Yeah. This is the start of their day. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> right. Look, my goal is to wake up at four forty-five a.m. every single day because then I go to the gym in the morning. My right. Man. It works for me. Same thing. Right. Don't get me wrong. Recently, because my business has been going nuts, I've been staying at the office till twelve or one, and I haven't been getting up. That's an honest statement. I'm not going to lie to people on here. Yeah. Right. That's a, you know. Now I need to work out. Now he's a different thing. schedule. Yeah. yeah. I have to work out a new power you schedule. Have to change the schedule. Exactly. Yeah. Or go to bed earlier. Right? right. Here's the thing. I have to make the decision. And I'm working yeah. on that now. Right? But again, we get to the office at 7 a.m. 
my entire team. I have a 7 a.m. call. We go through um, role playing of the current objection that they're getting the most often. We role play, we role play, we role play. Hop on the phones at 7:45. From 7:45, no one stops dialing until they set their appointment. Period. How many appointments do you do you uh, set for the team that you want them? Each to hit? agent, each person on the team that's an ISA and an agent is one. Just one a day. One a day. Just that's, one a day. That's, don't get me that's wrong. Fucking doable. In a super doable. Doable. Right. And don't get me wrong. Should but be hitting three if you could. That's the point. But again, like I was like, look, all I want you to do is set one. And here's the best part: most of them are trying to set two. Right. Most of them are trying to set three. Once well, you get perfect. to one and two, you want to get to three. Yeah, look, and there, have like, times, oh, there have been times I start dialing 745, 752 rolls around, I already have an appointment. So I'm like, am I yeah, going to stop dialing? Why the fuck am I going to stop? I'm not stopping. Yeah, yeah. So my point is that th- that'll be the first thing, right? We start dialing and we keep going. I typically have my appointments set. It's always the same time every Monday. It's always the same time every Tuesdays. Um, but another thing, look, schedule. That's the power your, schedule. Yeah. Pa- look, I'm going to say right now. So first thing when everybody says to me, like, what am I supposed to put in there first? I'm like, look, family time. The fun time. Plan your fun. Yeah. Put, it, put all that in first. Right, and then plan your schedule around it. Right? Some people might look in this shit and be like, whoa, 100%. I got too much fucking time and fun. Yeah, I agree with you. But here's the thing. I just limit my time. Like, for my, my time, but if I'm not working, I'm with my girlfriend, period. Nice. Right? But that's in my schedule. She has her days, right? Yeah. I call it princess time, right? That's her, that's her time. <laughs> right? She loves it. I love it. Fine. <laughs> makes her happy. Right? Look, it, ma- it makes her happy. Guy. I love it. Ma- it makes her happy, it. right? But it's, no, in my, awesome, it's in my schedule first, and I plan for it, and she sees it. Right, she's on my team. She actually is my admin, so she helps me with That's my marketing thing, and everything. That's awesome. beautiful. Thing. Um, but I'll leave everybody with this: in every aspect of your life, just think about it with your relationships, with your health, with everything. Are you content, or do you think you deserve more? And if you deserve more, and I know ninety-nine percent of you all do, what are you going to do about it? Because here's the thing: if you don't do something about it, who else is? Hmm. Nobody. I'm going to answer the question for you. Facts. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody. And again, look, you're co- it's, it's, it's coming from somebody. Again, I'm 23 years old. Ten years ago, I wanted to commit suicide. I built who I am now. This is not something that was built in a day. Again, I'm growing bigger every single year. Right? This year, the goal is, again, we're going to do about $3 million in commissions at 23 years old. Amen. Right? So, again, I just want to understand, anybody is capable of doing that if they're willing to make the sacrifice. And put in that work. Put in the work. I can't look to you. It's so funny. Again, like, I teach table, classes man. all the time, and it's so funny because I just keep saying the same thing. Yeah. Put in, put work, in the work. Put you want the secrets work, to success? Put in the work every single day, as long as you can, for, forever. With no There's excuses. your answer. With no excuses. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. Well, there you go. 23 Yo, and making it. I hear it, man. Love it. Yo, Henry, I appreciate the fuck out of you. appreciate you, by man. You. you guys are awesome. Thank you for being on the and show. Thank, definitely, definitely. Thank you for sharing with our audience everything Absolutely. you did. The personality, I mean, the personal stuff, especially. Sure. And being very transparent. And of course. Very, very, very transparent. Look, and I'm going to plug myself real fast. Yes, if you have any yes. referrals, yes. Central Jersey, honestly, the totally. whole state, I'll make it work regardless. But okay. the whole state of New Jersey, if you have anybody who's looking to move, 908 216 6532 is my cell. And give them your social, man. And my social handle on Instagram and on Facebook, please add me, is Henry Eisenstein. I'll just spell it real fast. H-E-N-R-Y E-I-S-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. Yeah. Awesome. And Love if you man. missed that, contact me and Josh. We'll put you uh, through yeah, to Henry. We'll definitely plug you guys in, right. man. But yo, Henry, appreciate thank it, man. You. I appreciate you yo, both. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, you as well. You know, it's been great. And everybody, thank you for listening to the JT Brand Podcast. Yes, thanks, and guys. stay tuned, man. Every week, every Tuesday, you will hear from us and you will hear other stories from other business like minded people. Yeah. And we appreciate y'all. Until then. Until then. Bye, guys. It's easy to think you're famous It's harder to work for greatness These kids, nowadays, it's your prevalence to the latest So if the party started 8 I'm coming like next Tuesdays They like when your life's debated They love when you